everyone, Fox is here, and this is my Booktubeathon Readathon wrap up. This year was actually the very first time I participated in a readathon, especially Booktube readathon. And you know what? It was quite interesting. I obviously did not take part in any video challenges or Instagram challenges just because even the fact that I had to read seven books or read anything during the week and a work full time was overwhelming enough for me. Maybe next year I'll take part in those challenges as well, but this year I was just trying to focus on reading. Let's get started and see how I did. So the first challenge was to read a book with yellow on the cover. And for this one, I picked You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levithan. This is a YA contemporary coming of age type of story. There are two main protagonists, Mark and Kate, who are both going through some love issues. Mark is in love with his best friend and Kate is in love with a girl that he she has never met before. It's very sweet. It's a bit of heartbreaking. It's also, you know, very stereotypical high school type of what should I do next in my life, you know, trying to find myself type of story. I enjoyed it. It was very well written. Um, the voices of Kate and Mark are very distinctive, so you can tell that there is difference between those two characters. Um, Kate is more lyrical, more whimsical, she is an artist, and Mark is more to the point, but at the same time, he's very sensitive inside. It was a very lovely read, I really enjoyed it. The only thing was, there are quite a few books, this type of books, coming of age type of stories, and I read a lot of them and they are in some ways repeat each other. What I liked about this book is that coming out is actually not part of the plot. Usually contemporary YA LGBTQ plus books in some ways deal with gender and sexuality in the sense that they either are approached about it or like the subject itself or they have to come out to their loved ones or family members or parents or friends to someone. In this case we already know that both Kate and Mark are gay and this kind of differentiates this book from all the rest of them just because both of the characters are very comfortable with their sexuality but at the same time they do experience the same problems like pretty much any other teenager like first love, being in love with your best friend, um, being popular, um, all of that stuff that hap that is happening here. Um, I'm I'm giving this book um, four four point five stars. I don't want to give it any higher rating just because there were slight like small things that I did not really like about this book, and it was not just because they were bad. It, the book is perfectly written. It's just at some at some instances I felt that Kate and Mark are way older than they actually were, and that made it a bit you know, less believable in some ways, and also the way that they dealt with the, some social, one social situation in which they decided to um, essentially do something to become more popular, and that thing I did not really enjoy, but otherwise, otherwise it's really well written. Mark is a sweetheart. He honestly, he's some parts of the novel that were told from his perspective were really, really heartbreaking. And Kate, she's very artsy, she's very creative, and she's also um, very anxious. She's obviously suffering from anxiety, and the fact that she has anxiety and it's pretty severe is never addressed as a mental illness in this book, which kind of I didn't like as well. And only because of that, I'm giving this book um, 4.5 stars. I'm not giving it 5 stars, but it's it's very nice. In many ways, this book reminded me of Anything Could Happen by Will Walton. It has a very similar storyline to Mark's storyline, and it kind of ends the same. I'm, I'm hoping it's not a spoiler, but um, it also has the same feeling. So I finished the book with pretty much the same feeling um, that I got when I was reading uh, when I was finishing, anything could happen. And if you read Simon vs. Homo sapiens agenda, you will also like this book a lot because it has the same, um, the same take on sexuality as in person being very comfortable with themselves. Yeah, 
So if you read um, Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda, you will also enjoy this book a lot. I highly recommend you go and read it, but if you decide to pick up this book or anything could happen, I suggest that you go and read Simon the Last, <laughs> just because you will probably need it. There is a bit of heartbreak here. I still have a bookmark there just because I had to bookmark a page with a very nice quote that I want to um, write down. So that's why there is a bookmark there. It's basically one of the last pages of the novel and it just has perfect sentence. The second challenge was to read a book after a sunset. And to be honest, it was the hardest challenge for me. I'm a very morning person. So when I get home, I basically start reading right away. So I read somewhere between seven and 10 and the sun sets at 9 p.m. So starting to read something at 9 or 10 is pretty late for me, but still I managed it. And for this challenge, I read The Judas Kiss by David Hare. This is a play that I went to see at uh, Mary Vish a couple of months ago. I really enjoyed the play and I immediately wanted to read it just the play itself. As you can tell, I loved it because I basically was tabbing every other page. This is the play about the final um, trial, the third trial and imprisonment and the aftermath of Oscar Wilde. <sighs> it's so heartbreaking. Jesus, I, I loved the play on stage and I loved reading it because David Hare gives a lot of stage directions so reading it is actually was very engaging it was very engaging for me and while i was reading it i was really remembering everything that was happening on stage and i was thinking about how the production was done what props were on set and who said where and who said what and how i honestly want to do a separate review of the play itself um, both written and the one that I saw on stage, so I'm not going to say much more about it. Just wanted to say that it's amazing. I loved it. I love the language. I think David Hare managed to capture the essence of Oscar Wilde's language and the way he spoke very, very clearly and just on point. Whew, okay, I love it. I gave it five stars. 4.55 stars, really enjoyed it, but I will do a separate review of the production itself and the play, so watch out for that. The third challenge was to read a book you discovered through booktube. Since there were quite a few books that I discovered thanks to booktube, I decided to pick something that I discovered recently, and for that one I picked initially Alabaster, Pale Horse, the collection of short stories by Caitlin R. Kiernan. I discovered this book thanks to Sophie's channel, and I started reading it on Overdrive and I was enjoying it, but it was not as engaging as I expected it to be. So I kind of had to set it aside for a bit. And instead of that book, I picked two volumes of two volumes, number 10 and 11. And oh my God, I love two. I discovered this series thanks to BookTube, specifically thanks to Samantha. And even though I, I kind of discovered the series and not these volumes, I still think that it counts for this challenge. So for this challenge, I read volume number 10, which is Blood Puddings, and I gave it four 4.5 stars. And volume number 11, The Last Suppers, which I gave 4.55 stars. I enjoyed both of them, but 11th was a slightly better. I know that the series is not for squeamish people, I am squeamish myself, but once I got over that first volume in which nothing made sense, the things got a bit crazier, but at the same time I got used to it, so volumes number 10 and 11 were absolutely perfect, I loved that I could, you know, jump back into the series and read those, so yeah, that was perfect, so I'm counting two books for this challenge. The fourth challenge was to read a book by your favorite author. And for this one, I picked up Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling. I've never read this book. I actually just purchased it only a couple of months ago. And since the movie is coming out in October or in November, I don't remember. But um, anyway, I just wanted to read this book to prepare for the movies. I didn't really have much expectations when it comes to this book, just because it's essentially a textbook. It's just a textbook. So... I didn't know really what to expect. What I liked about it is that the book has a lot of 
you know, small comments on the margins, which are done by both Harry and Ron. And um, I liked it a lot. Here we go. I liked it a lot, even though um, the book itself, like the dictionary or the textbook starts only here. And the beginning is just like an introduction plus explanations uh, like an introduction by Dumbledore I really enjoyed it and I think I enjoyed the introductions way more than I enjoyed the actual entries about Fantastic Beasts uh, the only reason for that being because when I read Harry Potter which was quite a while back I did not really pay much attention to fantastic animals in the stories um, I'm not very good with remembering uh, names, like unique names or unique words that do not really make sense, that do not exist in the language. So, because of that, I had a bit of trouble following and remembering all of those magical beings that were in Harry Potter books. I mean, like, besides obvious, like, salamander or a dragon, I obviously knows those, but if there is something else, like, Joburg Null, Joburg Null. I don't know what the hell is this, or something else. Well, I know basilisk, but, um, and manticore, but there were a lot of original animals that, um, Joanne Rowling came up with, which is great, but at the same time, reading this book was a bit boring. Um, whenever I had some sort of notes from, um, Harry or Ron that was amazing, and introduction was very literary and very well written but even though i did enjoy like you know dipping my feet back into harry potter world i i just all that this book made me feel is that i really want to read the series again this is what i want to do i want to read the series i don't even want to watch the movies i want to read the series even though the movies are great i just i just want to get back into the series and this is what like this was all the book did for me it's do you ha i don't think you have to read this book if you want to go and watch the movie the fantastic beasts no obviously you will not learn anything from it except for the fact that Newt had to rewrite this textbook like 40 times because he kept discovering more and more animals. Uh, that's one thing. And basically the whole movie will not be based on this except for like some characters which I mentioned here. Basically, Scalamander. Scamander. Jesus, I cannot even pronounce his name. So yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I was like, okay, well, I read it and yeah. So I gave it three stars. It was pleasurable, but it was not mind-blowing or anything like this. Another book which I read for this same challenge was um, issue number two of A Study in Pink. Essentially, this is a Sherlock manga, which I'm really enjoying. So I got um, issue number two. It was released in July, so I just uh, decided just to jump on it and read it right away. I loved it. 4.5 stars. I mean, like, you cannot really go wrong with Sherlock, but I'm still counting this to this challenge, even though it was super short, but I read it, and it fits. So here we go. The fifth challenge was to read a book older than you, and for this one, I picked The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. I read both this play and The Judas Kiss in quick succession. I was actually alternating between two, and oh my god, I loved it. I watched this play on stage, I listened to it as an audiobook, but this was the very first time when I actually read the play itself. I um, wrote the full review of the play and also of, like, I mean, the play which I saw on stage with David Suchet and also this play, I wrote a blog post about it, so I'm going to link it down below, but as you can tell by the number of tabs, I was tabbing, just look at this, I was tabbing throughout of it. I loved it because Oscar Wilde has such a way of tangling words, which is both on point and hilarious. I just want to read you uh, one sentence, and this is a response of Cecily to Miss Prism. Miss Prism says that she once wrote a novel, and Cecily says, How wonderfully clever you are! I hope it did not end happily. 
I don't like novels that end happily. They depress me so much. I mean, yes, that's that's the guy. He He's <sighs> such a genius. I love Oscar Wilde and Right in this play was fantastic and it's so funny. It's so funny and it's so on point and it makes fun of the society and it makes fun of pretty much everything, but obviously the society is the main point. But Jesus Christ just just I don't know if you enjoy reading the plays, but I do. Um if you do not like reading the plays, actual plays, just go and see it on stage because I'm pretty sure every every single theater does it. This is brilliant. And you know what? I'm I want to applaud the um the production that I saw and that was I think West End production with David Suchet because Oscar Wilde does not really have that many stage directions. Like, there is basically nothing. He just says, oh, they sat there. Oh, she stood up. And that was it. There is really nothing. And the way they interpret things was quite, quite brilliant. So, yeah, five stars, obviously. I did not mark it in Goodreads because I already have it shelved as red. But, yes, five stars. The sixth challenge was to read a book and watch a book to movie adaptation. And for this one, I picked The Price of Salt or Carol by Patricia Highsmith. To be completely honest, I did not finish this book. I'm still stuck on page 60 or something. And this is not because I did not enjoy it. I'm really enjoying this book. It's very well written. The language is very fluid and very articulate and artistic and very, very, very beautiful. I love it. And only because I was basically reading this book at, um, I think on Sunday, Sunday night, I decided not to push and just finish other two plays that I had to finish. And I wanted to take my time with this book, as I mentioned in one of my vlogs. That's why I did not finish it and I did not watch the movie because I obviously want to read the book before I watch the movie. But it's it's so well written. I, I, I yeah, I, I need to finish it. It's, it's so lovely. And the seventh challenge was to read seven books. And you know what? I actually completed that. I... I'm so surprised and the only reason why I managed to complete it just because I read two books, two plays and three graphic novels, one of which was extremely short. That was the reason why I was able to read as much as I read and oh my god that felt amazing. I am very happy with the way I did on this readathon. I completed six challenges out of seven, which is amazing. And I honestly doubted myself so much and I thought that I would read just one book and be done with it. It was a very, very difficult week and it was hard to read during the week, just like I mentioned before. I work full time. At the same time, I did my best and I almost completed it. I almost completed it. But you know what? I'm really happy. It was my first time participating in a readathon and I did way better than I expected. So yay! Woo! I'm so happy and I read very good books and I gave very high ratings to each one of them, which is bloody amazing. And yeah, this was my wrap up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!